We are now done with the gram positive organisms. It is now time to move on to the gram negatives. Here we'll start again with another algorithm that will be really helpful to you in keeping the classification of all the different bacteria straight. The scheme is a bit easier for gram negatives, which, by the way, are what color on gram stain? Right, pink or red, unlike gram positives, which are purple or blue. There are four main shapes that gram negative organisms can take cocci, coxoid rods, a mix between circular and rod shape rods, and comma-shaped organisms. Of the cocci organisms, you thankfully only need to know two species of bacteria which are within the same genus, Neisseria meningitidis and Neisseria gonorrhea. Within the coxoid rods, focus on Haemophilus influenza and Bordetella pertussis. Within the rods, let's focus mostly on these organisms, Klebsiella, E. coli, Shigella, Salmonella, and Pseudomonas. McConkie's agar will distinguish Klebsiola E. coli from Shigella salmonella pseudomonas. Then, to figure out whether you are dealing with pseudomonas, you can check if the organism is oxidase positive. Finally, there are only two comma-shaped organisms to know, Vibrio cholera and Campylobacter. Remember the buzzword comma-shaped as it is often used on the boards and immediately tells you that you're dealing with cholera and Campylobacter. McConkie's agar will be helpful to you in distinguishing the different gram-negative rods. This medium tells you whether your organism is a lactose fermenter or not. Those that use lactose as a nutrient source will contain beta-galactosidase to break down lactose into glucose and galactose. I would focus on knowing that E. coli and Klebsiella are lactose fermenters, therefore appearing as pink colonies on McConkie's agar. Lactose non-fermenters such as Pseudomonas and Salmonella will appear white on McConkie's agar. You will learn more about this later in the antimicrobial section, but just know that vancomycin and penicillin G drugs have no effect against gram-negative organisms because they cannot penetrate their outer membrane. When it comes to gram-negative bacteria, there are only two important cocci species you need to know, N. gonorrhea and N. meningitidis. Both ferment glucose and appear as diplococci, pairs of cocci, but N. meningitidis can be distinguished from N. gonorrhea by two features. N. meningitidis is a maltose fermenter, remember the M's, while Neisseria gonorrhea is not. Neisseria meningitidis also has a polysaccharide capsule that inhibits phagocytosis. Let's talk about Neisseria gonorrhea first. This organism is primarily responsible for the sexually transmitted disease, gonorrhea. An important method for isolating Neisseria bacteria from clinical samples is to grow the specimen on Thayer-Martin medium. Thayer-Martin medium contains VPN agar, which consists of vancomycin, polymyxin, and nystatin. Vancomycin inhibits growth of gram-positive organisms. Polymyxin inhibits other gram-negative organisms, and nystatin inhibits fungi, so that only Neisseria will be able to grow. Gonorrhea is transmitted via unprotected sexual intercourse. Uncomplicated gonorrheal infections will result in purulent urethritis for males and symptoms of dysuria and penile discharge. Infected women can experience acute cervicitis with abdominal pain, vaginal discharge, dysuria, or more commonly, no symptoms at all. Treatment involves a third-generation cephalosporin antibiotic, usually intramuscular ceftriaxone injection. A serious complication of untreated gonorrheal disease in females is an ascending infection, whereby gonorrhea spreads to the uterus, fallopian tubes, and ovaries, and is known as PID, or pelvic inflammatory disease. Symptoms of PID consist of abdominal pain, cervical motion tenderness, dysuria, fever, nausea, vomiting, and chills. PID is dangerous because it can lead to tubo-ovarian abscess and scarring with increased probability for infertility or ectopic pregnancy. A rare complication of PID is called Fitzhugh-Curtis syndrome, whereby inflammation of the uterus and oviduct can cause inflammation of the connective tissue surrounding the liver. Symptoms may include acute onset of right upper quadrant pain, aggravated by breathing or coughing, and referred pain to the right shoulder following an episode of PID. 
Babies born to mothers with gonococcal infections may present with ophthalmia neonatorum during their passage through an infected vaginal canal. This will present as an acute purulent conjunctivitis several days after birth. This is the basis for all newborns receiving prophylactic intraocular antibiotics to prevent gonococcal and chlamydial infections. N. gonorrhea is also the number one cause for septic arthritis seen in sexually active adolescents. There is no vaccine because the pili proteins of Neisseria gonorrhea undergo such rapid antigenic variation that it is impossible to establish long-lasting immunity. Now let's talk about Neisseria meningitis. This organism is responsible for causing bacterial meningitis in adolescents and populations within close quarters, such as military recruits or college dormitory residents. Meningitis is inflammation of the meninges, the membranes which cover and protect the brain and spinal cord. Symptoms include abrupt onset of headache, fever, chills, neck stiffness, nausea, vomiting, and photophobia. Neisseria meningitis can also cause meningococcemia, a life-threatening meningococcal sepsis during which small vessel thrombosis and consumptive coagulopathy results in severe multi-organ disease. Petechial or purpuric rashes are often seen in the trunk and lower extremities. Fulminant meningococcemia can result in septic shock and bilateral hemorrhagic adrenal gland destruction, known as waterhouse friedrichsen syndrome. Destruction of adrenal glands leads to hypotension, hypocortisolism, hyponatremia, and hyperkalemia. Meningitis can be treated with a third-generation cephalosporin, such as ceftriaxone and rifampin should be given as prophylaxis to close contacts of an infected individual. There is also a meningococcal vaccine, which is recommended for adolescents age 11 to 12. It covers four of the five most common serogroups, A, C, Y, and W135. Serogroup B is not sufficiently immunogenic to create a vaccine. Haemophilus influenza is a gram-negative coxoid rod, which used to be a major cause of severe childhood respiratory disease. However, thanks to successful vaccination programs against the highly virulent encapsulated H. influenza serotype B, Hib, H. influenza is no longer a leading cause for diseases such as epiglottitis and meningitis. Today, H. influenza disease is mainly caused by serotypes C, F, and non-typable strains that contribute to normal nasopharyngeal bacteria flora and cause localized diseases such as otitis media, pneumonia, and sinusitis. Do you remember which bacteria we already talked about that is currently the leading cause of otitis media? Right, strep pneumonia. Suspect Hib infections in children who are immunocompromised, non-vaccinated immigrants, or asplenic. Due to increasing resistance against ampicillin and amoxicillin, treat respiratory H. flu infections with azithromycin and meningitis with the CNS penetrant cephalosporin ceftriaxone. Rifampin should be used by close contacts for prophylaxis. You won't see this organism on our algorithm because it is poorly gram-stained and requires a special silver stain to be seen. Legionella pneumophilia, the bacterium responsible for Legionnaire's disease, is so named after its discovery at an American Legion convention that was held at a hotel in Philadelphia in 1976. At the Legionnaire's convention, the organism was isolated from the air conditioning system, and it was understood that the microbe prefers to inhabit natural and artificial sources of water. Transmission occurs via inhalation of infectious aerosols. A mild form of legionellosis is called Pontiac fever and presents with influenza-like symptoms such as fever, chills, myalgias, and resolution within about a week without treatment. Legionnaire's disease is a more severe community-acquired pneumonia presenting with high fever, non-productive cough, headache, hyponatremia, and rapid deterioration to death without treatment. Legionnaire's disease should be treated with erythromycin, as the microbe contains beta-lactamases, which make it resistant to penicillins.